All right, class. Um, so we have learned about the female reproductive hormones. This unit, and this week, we're going to be focusing on looking at male reproductive hormones. And the male reproductive hormone is nowhere near as complex as the female. And part of the reason is that in the female reproductive system, the hormones have to work to make sure the egg is developing correctly and in the uterus is um, prepped correctly for implantation. So in the male, the main point of the pathway is to develop male characteristics, but then also then to um, produce sperm. Okay, so let's get started to look at what's going on. In the first slide that in your lecture note um, is the um, idea to look at um, the hormone regulations of male reproduction compare with the female. So you already learned a bunch of how the female system works. So start really thinking about the pathways are not brand, brand new. What they're doing is modify slightly. So the male uses the same hormone, but it's going to produce slightly different results. For example, the hormone FSH in a female, so here looking at FSH, is to promote the development of the follicle from the primary to secondary to mature. But in male, what we're looking at is that the follicle in male, so think of, think of follicle as seed. So in the male, what we're looking at is sperm is developing. So here we're looking at the control of sperm production and sperm number. LH in male and female is actually very similar. They're important for the production of testosterone. In the female is in the theca, and in the male, this is done in the latex cells. But in the male, the testosterone does go into the blood and allow for male development. In female, the testosterone is converted to estrogen. So I want you to kind of think about what each pathway is doing, so that's going to help you understand the difference between male and female. Okay, so this is an overview of the pathway on the hypothalamus pituitary testes. So this is in the testes. Okay, so that's the HPT pathway. But the pathway really splits into two. One half of it is to regulate testosterone production, and the other half is regulating the production of sperm. So you can look at it as a combination, but I've also drawn, drawn it out separately for you, looking at testosterone production and also looking at sperm production. Okay, so I can also draw that out for you so you can follow it, but it's all summarized here as well. So for both pathways, what we're looking at is a hypothalamus, pituitary testes, okay? Let me make a box a little bit bigger here. So it's the same in both. So we have the hypothalamus, pituitary. It might really help you to draw along with me so that don't just watch the video, but draw follow along, so that's going to help you understand a lot better. So the hypothalamus pituitary and testes pathway for testosterone is in the cells called Leydig. And the hypothalamus pituitary testes pathway for sperm production is in the Sertoli cells. Okay. So we, you don't have to number the pathway um, per se. There's really, if it's homeostasis, there's no one, two, three, four. But let's just start from the top for the male. So for both pathways, the hypothalamus share that they both release GnRH. So I should actually make it red. So the hormone is gonadotropin releasing hormone. And in sperm is the same GnRH.
GNRH stimulates the pituitary gland in both sides. But in the hormone responsible for testosterone, we're going to be looking at the release of the hormone LH. And in the sperm side is FSH. Follicle stimulating hormone. So one way to remember is sperm and FSH. So LH binds to the receptors on the Leydig cell. LH Leydig. Okay, so that's where the receptor is. And that binds to produce testosterone. Okay, and testosterone feeds back to the hypothalamus and pituitary to make sure there is a homeostasis of testosterone. We don't want too much testosterone, okay? Too much manliness is too much. Too little is not enough. So you do regulate to have homeostasis. You've been, you might notice this, especially with um, puberty for male. So you might have a son that is um, going through puberty, and one week they seem to be really quite aggressive, fighting back. Um, they might be breaking things, um, causing trouble. And the next week they seem to be really sleepy and calm and like that. So they're just regulating through the pathway to get to a homeostasis. Okay, so that's testosterone. So on this side, we have the FSH, which binds to the Sertoli cell, okay? So the receptor for FSH is on the Sertoli cells, and the binding of FSH to the Sertoli cells tells the Sertoli cells that they need more sperm. So follicle-stimulating hormone on the Sertoli cells tells the body that they need more sperm. But testosterone has to come in also to the testes to allow sperm to be formed. So there's two hormones required for sperm production. That's FSH and testosterone. So the two together is going to lead to sperm production. So sperm is a cell. So sperm is not going to be able to swim back to the brain and feed back. So how do you keep track of how many sperm you have? That's going to be accomplished through, as sperm is produced, a hormone is produced with sperm production, and that's called inhibin. Okay? Inhibin is produced as sperm is produced. So when you have the negative feedback from inhibin, it's only going to affect FSH only. Okay? And I have you thinking about that question um, here in purple. So if you have low sperm count, what would the inhibin levels be? Okay, so remember you're counting the sperm, making the hormone as a way to count the sperm. And also because I say two hormones are required for sperm production, what will happen if you have a high testosterone but low FSH? Okay, so if you have one but not the other, what is the sperm production like? So practice those pathways, draw them in your journal, write them down step by step, and um, hopefully you can figure, understand um, how the pathway works. And then using this understanding for the pathway, then apply it to two application problems. One is the castrato male, thinking about how that happened in the 15 and 1600s. And then one is anabolic steroid abuse, where testosterone is used by athletes in sports. Okay, so this is male hormone pathway.